clearly headers have right to do business anywhere in Nigeria by Frederick Mwabufo. Masters of volatile quality require statecraft. That which is necessary may not be expedient or practicable under certain circumstances, and it takes and it takes statesmanship to discern the feasible movement for applying needed policy prescriptions. Issue of state are uh, delicate, and with such a country like Nigeria, they are volcanic. With a decision that affects a distant group, is taken or when a decision is. Uh, which affects a distinct group is taken by political leaders without consultation and without the exhaustion of the process of dialogue and conciliation. The resolution is subject to be interpreted interpreted as prejudice and most importantly when the decision involves the dislocation of a people from an age-long livelihood statesmanship, it is imperative Open grazing is no longer salubrious, both for cattle, man, and the climate. Herding cattle from place to place is an anachronistic practice that is best suspended in the past. Nomadism does not belong in the present or future in Nigeria. We have to evolve beyond this outmoded method of rearing animals. Well... (laughs) It's not, I mean, to be honest, no method is ever bad or left in the past. It's just there are ways to go about things. You, they're not saying you can't rear your cattle the way you want to because, you know, being nomadic is actually part of their culture. However, that lifestyle, I, I can understand and see why it's not necessarily fitting for the modern day. Um, but then again, it's like if you want to go into search, the fact is, the Nigerian land is not your land. It's a different thing. If Nigeria was purely Fulani, okay, it might be a whole different conversation. However, it is not. Um, the indigenous of other people of other lands in Nigeria take their land and their resources very, very seriously. So again, it's like if you wanted to open, you know, graze, it should not be open grazing, first of all. And if you want to do it in another state, you need to buy your own land within that state. Well, a huge one, in fact. And you can, you know, go through that sovereign process by yourself. Um, okay, so, however, as I said with the writer, in a 2018 article, we must realize that for the Fulani, nomadism is not just an economic alternative, but it's a sacerdotal pursuit Compelling them to discard their halo endeavor without an economic surrogate is tad insensitive. The acme of farmer had a crisis in 2018. The federal government unfurled the National Livestock Transformation Plan. The plan was anchored to six viable stanchions, economic investment, conflict resolution, law and order, humanitarian relief, information educating and strategic communication and cross cutting issues all right um the fact is it's the privilege i again it's the privilege of that i think the privilege you have when the government is not necessarily on your neck i think again funny headers have your right to do business anywhere in nigeria as they should but it will come with cost because it, we're not just we're very diverse we the land is not the land is diverse okay even within a tribe there are people that you know take control of their land and who is in their land so again it's like this idea that this nomadic culture that you think you can practice you know inter-tribe does not work it doesn't work it's a different thing if we're all flani or after we are different but then let's say after like let's say hundred years our lifestyle then changes where it is now acceptable or it is now practical and feasible for our lifestyle to be nomadic but it isn't so again it's like i don't i don't understand why this conversation needs to be had why we should ban open like like does it make sense that cows cross the street like does that make any sense to you um I don't know. I don't know. It, again, we have to kind of decide what kind of life do we want to live? Do we want to live with animals? Not that this is bad in any way, 
But again, it's like if the people are not accustomed or they've decided that that is not the lifestyle that they want, it is not the lifestyle that they want. That is it. So again, it's like the law, well, as we should know, the law is over any other thing. The law is number one. The law is over the people in the country, according to some. All this ideology is fine. Whatever, you, if you think they're effective, fine. I don't even think that's a question. The question really lies um, in how it is practiced. and Because, again, it's like, if the law, if they've come together, again, not everything has to be constitutional, okay? The constitution cannot f- provide solutions for every single problem that would be in this world. It can't. That is it. The constitution is meant to guide you to make practical decisions and apply them to the people. Or it's basically trying to, you know, get the best outcome from the laws that you have. And again, it's like if let's say um a place in Nigeria got bombed tomorrow, would you go back to the law and say the law the of course the law will probably have laws, specific ones on um security and all that, but then it's like you can never really prepare for anything. So the law has to be flexible in terms of making you know effective decisions in a short period of time that's basically what it is however unless if you even look at the basics of how the law is perceived we don't follow it i don't think it should be a problem um if we're really really united in terms of having the same ideology i do not think that the government saying this should be a problem um because instead of us saying okay fine if you're if you're offended or if you don't think it's effective we can go there okay you can say okay the ban on open grazing is not effective you can say that however it's like your first counter argument to that is it's tribalistic you are you are destroying years of nomadic culture like you're destroying this is tribalistic prejudice like really grow up okay grow up okay this in this nigeria year, like it's not the time for you to start saying sensitive sensitive and start saying oh no there's prejudice prejudice what people move you know what we move okay so again it's like it's hard but the fact is even that is like if you if you don't agree with the law we shouldn't do we even understand the law <laughs> like that's even the question before we even go into the 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 complexities of how the law is being applied and culture do we understand the law do we feel like the law comes from us do we have a connection with the law do we feel represented by the law you know do we know the basics of our rights and how we are as africans again we must employ a system of government that reflects us and we must employ a system of government that we decide on how it is run because we are, we make up the country. We are the people. We are the culture. If we want to change, see, see, if culture wants to change, we are the ones that will change the culture. It's not like as if okay, the culture is just there. The culture was made by people. If you do social studies, culture is a way of life and a way of people. So again, it's like that should also apply to the way we are being governed. That's what I think. Before we get into the complexities of. Oh, is the ban, you know, good? You know, the government has no right to do this or tribes or whatever. The law that we're talking about and we apply, do we actually believe it? Do we actually follow it? Do we actually hold by it? Put what you think about it in the comment section below. I don't forget to like and subscribe.